Okay, so many people are fighting the flu or a cold and some kind of upset going on, immune issue, imbalance. And I've got a lot of information to pull from. Let's just go with one of these books. Uh, see, I like this one. This is actually what I would recommend you go out and get yourself. One of the herbal medicine nursing books. And this is an over-the-counter shelf. Now, the difference is this is what you'd find for just about anyone. It's not really peer-reviewed. It's not backed up. So, this is what you'd get from like a Facebook post, I guess, you'd get a lot of opinions and folk stories. And you might have a huge list, like here you go. This is just this huge list of uses. That's scary. That's not, that doesn't look right. Let me show you the difference. This is a scholarly textbook. Now, there's huge differences between information. That's all I'm pointing out. And excuse my hands, I've been putting my dog in my hands. So, this is uses. Now, the uses, number one, it's in paragraph format like a sentence. It reads like a sentence. And it's not more than like five that it's really been tested and tried for, and it even mentions how different uses, like it'll be coffee substitute is a different form of taking whatever dandelion, and just eating it as a salad. So this is why I recommend this book. And uh, another book that I would say, you know, I also use during my consult and planning. Um, I use all these books. I can even help identify plants. Well, this is what I take with me on my hikes and walks to identify. So it's coming right out in the open. <clears throat> yeah, these are easy reading, but when it comes to the uses, you can't trust it when there's nine different uses in there. Here's another one. Now I've gone through my collection and I've really scaled back the number of books that I have. So I just, I, I have this book show. books. And I have that bookshelf. Um, and I have more books. Like, well, it's almost a wall of books. There's plenty of space up there for a couple stuffed animals. And then that bookshelf. So, that one I have a a couple of anatomy books over there, too. I have my own nursing books there. Nutritional Healing. That's another good book down there, Nutritional Healing. And... Natural medicine in there is another one. So I have that. And these you can't see, but this is all part of therapeutic nutrition, a program.
to Bowman College, which is a huge amount of learning and training. Um, <clears throat> but of course, one nursing program is the entire um, stack of binders down there. That's the nursing program, plus um, each semester is another, or each, yeah, each semester is another big binder. It takes up the whole entire floor uh, row down there. The nursing program is a big program. And there's some more books that contain information that is outdated. <coughs> but <coughs> If you take it with a grain of salt, a little bit of the outdated information might be um, just, it, it'll it add insight. Let's see if we find... <clears throat> dandelion and this is just one of those things of how much to take and it's also referring to the roots so this has more lo lore to it as well. And uh, even planetary lore. So I like looking in here just for the fun little fun facts of the book, which are really cool. Um, microbiology. The microbiology book is front and center because of the part where it is talking about how we treat water. <clears throat> in here right on probiotics and microbial cultures applied to uh, have shown beneficial effect with prebiotics and this is yeah it's microbiology but it's also the relationship between the microbiome and the bodyology which is the study of the body so yeah. to do it. We used to use this book. And before, before any of these nutrition programs came out, we had to do our studies on a small little bit. Like, here we have lactation starts here. And we just got maybe a brochure worth yeah, less than two pages. Now we have nutrition of the infant next next area there. So very, very little. Very, very little. Little, 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 little. Mm. 
most of this book is this. And this is how we used to have to calculate everything. So I'd have to look up and, oh yeah, this came with a program, but I would have to look it up through this book because the program was extra and I didn't buy that. So without using the program, I had just to add all of this up. So I would make my own list of foods that had been eaten and the measurement and I would transfer that to how many calories and protein, carbohydrate, fiber, fat, all of this stuff total for the day to see if you've had or if I've had or whatever the study was at the time to see if it was 100% of the daily required value. And look at that huge amount of vitamin A from that Cooked mashed pumpkin? Man. And uh, the second and third is both pumpkin. The third one is canned pumpkin. And so you just look through. And it makes it an easy visual. For me, I remember these kind of charts. Because it's kind of like those little trapper keepers. Little kits and everything was in the chart. Anyway, I don't know why it's easier for me to remember it in a chart. So, um, Earth Medicine, Earth Food. This is inside the book. I've had it for a long time. I really haven't used it much. <clears throat> uh, but it makes great identification. And here we have. Jimson weed. Um, I really don't get into this book much. And it just kind of sits in the back. It's more of a folklore. <laughs> okay, so laxatives are marked. And um, let's see. Colds were not a real big thing. <clears throat> and there are plants um, that were used up until just a couple years ago, which are now not used. It also helps with, this is more of plant identification. And, you know, wintergreen, you can get menthol or wintergreen. Wintergreen is more of an essential oil. <clears throat> We have this growing in Sonoma County. There are normal plants. Let's see now this for the colds. This has a completely different suggestion list. So everything has to be taken with a grain of salt and so many books to read through. That. This one is just one of those that I don't typically use, but it's cool to have because of its, basically because of the outdated information, knowing that the science behind why it was used in the first place sometimes helps to identify why a person would be taking it currently, 
and perhaps they might not know. So yeah, this is 1972, reprinted in 1980. <clears throat> All right, and the next thing. That's about it. Of course, um, I have gotten into this book recently, and it just helps me understand pH balancing labs and stuff. So that's critical thinking in the back. I like to switch over and do some of these little critical thinking things. lists like the orange and so all these things yeah I've spent a lot of years studying and I think it is very useful information I wouldn't say that the typical person who's self-taught would go out and know exactly which books choose from what to learn from right off the top, but with some help and guidance from a teacher in the college, you can get a more generalized training. Otherwise, self-taught is a real specialized field, and it is uh, you can be a master of one thing or, you know, your own condition. But you can also be a wealth of resource and information. Here's one of the books I started off with back when I was 19. And you can tell, this is when I was totally, totally into it. I don't want to be making such a long video. But, oh my gosh, look at that. That, that is, um, paper's falling out. And, like, I, I just, can you tell I used this book? <laughs> uh, I don't want to leave that bookmark there. Let's see what it is. Okay. So it looks like rheumatism. That was something I was looking at. And, uh, I'm sure they've got things too, but this, this book is so generalized. It's like that list of rheumatism, and it's like 90 herbs long, and that some of those herbs may or not, ref may or may not refer to rheumatism. <sighs> so, that is what I recommend. <clears throat> read through those to get a hold of the common cold or just go out and buy a box of tea made for the common cold and or a box of tea I think there's some handcrafted teas on the website etsy.com and you can get for the common flu, you can get a tea. Tea for the common flu. Now, one thing about the common cold recently in Marin County, there was an outbreak of meningitis. And find meningitis here. And just look at the symptoms. A 
Okay, so you can get meningitis from basically anything, bacteria, viruses, fungi, pa parasites, or other toxins. There's a bacteria that does really like that area, so it's common. And each type needs to be treated for the type that it is. And the most recent type in Marin County was the bacterial meningitis. And so they're saying, yeah, this is the... Um, this is the smaller layer of the sheath that goes around the brain. This gets infected. And the space underneath the protective layer, the membrane that goes around the brain, is uh, infected. So that means it's in the fluid of the brain. It's throughout that vessel's it might have gone into the vein or into the bloodstream or it could have come from the bloodstream so low incidence 9 out of every 100,000 the mortality rate is 25% <clears throat> And there's different types of bacterial. So there's Neisseria and there's Streptococcus. The most common two. And it looks like the pneumococcus and gram-negative uh, are more common with babies. So it's all different across the lifespan. The symptoms... that you want to watch out for is well you could end up with definitely light sensitivity facial loss of movement you might lose your hearing you might lose your sight you will definitely feel next